Okay, so here's what this video isn't. It isn't five easy ways to grow your audience. It isn't three foolproof ways to get rich from your art. Now this is about something a little more important than any of that rubbish. Being an artist isn't about what you do, it's about who you are. But when it feels like all your reasons to create have been taken away, it's easy to lose yourself along with them. So this is about not losing yourself, or at least not losing the part of yourself that makes. Because when artless government swindlers are making very sure that they know exactly how little they value us, while at the same time we're going cold turkey without the little dopamine hits that audiences used to give us, then it's very easy to feel disconnected from our artistic sides. Being an artist isn't about what you do, it's about what you are, but you become by doing. So sometimes you have to do, not because of, but in spite of. So here's a few things that keep me feeling like what I am when there's little on the outside to confirm it for me. Number one, get your thoughts and feelings from the inside to the outside. You know all those dark thoughts and fears and worries that sit at the back of your head weighing it down? Get them out. Whatever your art is, use it to siphon them from the interior world to the exterior world where there is so much more space for them to spread out and maybe even evaporate. Write about how you feel, and I know that's super obvious, but that doesn't mean it doesn't work. Get those dark thoughts and put them into a song, a poem, a sculpture, a movement, a whatever. It doesn't need to be good or finished or for anybody else to ever see. It just needs to not have existed before you made it. Here's the trick. The act of getting those feelings out and pinning them down to your tabletop like a frog in a biology class and dissecting them, well, turns out the closer you look, often the less scary they seem. The simple act of taking these fears and forcing them to be words or pictures or sculptures or dances or whatever, it puts them in a different part of your brain and for me at least it makes them a lot easier to deal with. And on the off chance other people see what you've written or danced or made, then maybe they'll understand your feelings better and also their own. And that's not just a way of using art, that is what art is for. Number two, find the others. That's what Timothy Leary said, and he was wrong about a few things, but he was right about that. Find the others. And there's a lot of us at the moment, all on the same leaky boat on choppy waters feeling seasick. So when we're all going through something together, let's go through it together. Check in with each other. Often the simple reminder that other people are going through similar pain to you makes all that pain a little more bearable. The reassurance that we're all scared of the same things makes those monsters a little less powerful. It's good to know you're not alone, and even the smallest gesture of casual love to a friend rarely leaves either party feeling worse. Number three, consume less news and more art. Sure, you should stay informed, but don't watch the news just because you think you should if it's making you unable to do much else. Don't doom scroll the socials if all you're doing is stabbing the retweet button with an angry finger while you nod with clenched teeth. What to do instead? Well, you're an artist, aren't you? Consume art. Sometimes it feels in my head like the world is probably ending. And I know it probably isn't, probably not right now, probably. But if it were, would I want to spend those last moments watching live footage of it on CNN? Or would I rather spend that time watching Gene Kelly dance? or listening to Ella sing, or staring at the way Matisse paints a face. You are what you eat. If you watch less news, then you won't miss anything important that happens, but you might feel a little bit less like the world is ending. And in the meantime, however long that is, you've got a lot of good stuff to catch up on. And finally, number four, don't be creative. Yeah, I know, this is supposed to be about ways to stay creative, but honestly, I care more about you as a person than as an artist, so if you don't want to make anything today, that's alright. 
This year things have been hard, like immensely hard. Do whatever you need to do to keep an even keel. Being an artist isn't about what you do, it's about what you are. So don't buy into that suffering artist rubbish. You don't need to suffer. Get some fresh air, get some sunshine on your skin, find and do the things that bring you gentle contentment as often as you can. Thanks for watching. If any of that helped or struck a chord or even just distracted you for a few minutes, then please do subscribe to this channel and consider supporting my work on Patreon. And if you're not doing so already, please do follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Stay safe everyone, and I'll see you next time. Oh,